Hey guys, welcome back to a new and exciting tutorial on how to composite your 3D renderings from V-Ray in Nuke. But first of all, I want to thank you guys for your positive feedback on my previous tutorials. It really means a lot and it helps me to create new and exciting content for future tutorials. If you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be always informed when a new tutorial is up and running online. Now let's begin with the compositing tutorial. As you can see I am in Nuke and I've got my final render in my viewer and I want to first of all show you what my render looked like when it came out of V-Ray. So this is what the render looks like and the rest I did in Nuke except the lens flares. But all in all this is my render and this is what I combed over it. I first of all want to explain you the possibilities which you get when you use passes. So for instance if your client now wants a different car color the old way would be to go in, into your 3D package and re-render in a different color. And now you can just simply with passes change the color in the comp. So in my compositing tree I can just simply go and color correct my diffuse channel. Let's say I want the car to be black. I just change my color value and now you've got a black car. You can also just change whatever color you like and it goes flu very fluid. You can also decrease for instance the reflections on the car by just reducing the mix. So now you can see that the reflections are being dialed down and my car looks more like a matte car. Which is also very easy to adjust. You can also change um, the refractions, change tinted colors. So now I, I want to show you what my rendered passes looked like. So this is a layer contact sheet which displays all the render passes in my existing EXR file. It's called a layer contact sheet in Nuke. So you can see I've got my RGBA which is my render. I have a depth, depth pass, a GI pass, a normal cam pass and so on. So you have a lot of layers. A lot of them you won't need but for instance I have some color ID passes where I can just change the color of the rims or change the, tint, the tinting of the windows or whatever IDs I created even if for my number plate I can change the color for that so these passes are set up in in V-Ray and I will show you how I did that so let's go to Maya which software I used for rendering uh, this is my car model pretty straightforward and I don't want to go in, into deep in Maya I just want to show you how you cre can create your passes I have a long list now in here but most of the items are material IDs or object IDs which are as I just showed you the color ID passes in Nuke for instance um, this one here or this one or that one important stuff are the diffuse, the GI, the lighting, the specular, the ambient occlusion which isn't included by default. You have to create a custom render pass for that but I will show you that. To create your render passes you just click on them, let's say a raw GI and click add and it will be added to your um, render, added render elements list. Or let's say we want to add a, a diffuse or whatever, they all get added somewhere in here. There, there it is. There's the second GI which I just created. It look, it looks like a lot of elements, but as I just said, you won't use all of them. The important ones are. I just highlight them in here. It's probably easy to see the diffuse, the reflection, the refraction. If you have self-illuminating objects, this one, shadow, specular, lighting, GI. If you've got caustics, obviously caustics. And you can also add the raw passes. The raw passes are to give you even more control on or later on in compositing. But in most cases you won't need them. But 
for the tutorial sake, I just add them to show you. Raw reflection filters are also important for advanced compositing. Raw refraction. Let's see. And normals, probably. If you want to relight a new gore in After Effects. Velocity, if you have some moving objects, you can also create a velocity pass which changes your RGB values to, um, to a motion pass and you can in new Clayton adjust your motion blur which is way faster than rendering it in V-Ray. If you use light select on your V-Ray lights you can use this pass to later on change your lighting moods. So and then you just add them. As you can see I have a lot of, of them in here and they are also the same as these here. So you, here you have your depth parse, GI, diffuse, reflection filter, reflection specular and all that. So now I want to show you how I created the ambient occlusion pass which is this one here which gives you nice detail on narrow edges or a, objects which are occluded from each other. So in Vira you probably know how the shade is called. It's in the hyper shade called the V-Ray Dirt shader. Just write it in here. V-Ray Dirt, there you go. This shader here is used to create occlusion. So you have your occluded color, your unoccluded color, your radius so if you want to add the ambient occlusion layer to your EXR multi-channel files you just have to look for the extra texture pass double click to add it and then on the texture you click the checkerboard to add a new node choose the V-Ray Dirt node adjust your settings and rename it properly like this so you get a clear naming in your EXR file. That's probably it. Then you just go and hit render and then you open up Nuke and you just see your read node and it looks like the render.